All right, so I'm going to try it again. Live chat. Pop out chat. Yeah. Okay, so this is different. So I got a pop out chat here so I can see. Okay, so I got Tony. Yay. Marioch. Candice. Shalanda. Kim. Marcella. Candice again. Marcella and Candice. Okay, cool. So... So this is uh this is kind of a pain in the ass. Let's see if I can do that. All right, well let's try that. So yeah, so I was uh, how many people saw the uh, what's up ECY dubs? How many people saw the Patreon video of Action Speak Louder Than Words? That's what I wanted to talk about. Primarily, uh, yeah, all those damn buttons. You don't even know. You don't even know. I'm old, man. What did you think, Mario? And I'm not I'm not fishing for compliments. I want to know if people understand what I'm saying, because a lot of times it's, uh, you know, I have so many people who who come into training and think, you know, literally, it's the dog like this. How do you make this dog sit? I said, well, did you did you teach it to sit? Yeah. OK, well, if you taught the dog to sit. Why isn't it sitting? That's the question. Uh, Tony. Yep. Anybody. I just, uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, I just, it's funny because it's a very pretty lady and it, it, it really does have a lot to do with her life experience and, and from, from how she looks to getting what she wants, how she communicates, she's got a lot of money and it, people communicate differently with rich people because they, they want their money. They want their money and, and rich people get very used to celebrities do this too. They get very used to people wanting something from them, but they also get used to on the other side, having to be able to tell people what they want and get it done and get it done. So that's really a dichotomy on both, uh, both ends of the spectrum, right? Because a, I'm trying to give her something that she paid for but she doesn't want it given that way. And that's really the only way it's going to be given to you is because the dog, that's the way the dog understands. And I'm not trying to get anything from her except a fair exchange rate for my services. I don't care who, 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 who you are, that dog. And I say this all the time. Dog doesn't care if you're black. Dog doesn't care if you're white. Dog doesn't care if you're a pedophile. Dog doesn't care if you're a murderer. Dog doesn't care if you're the Pope. Dog doesn't care if you're Mother Teresa. Dog doesn't care if you're fat, short, tall, skinny. Doesn't make a fucking bit of difference. Whatever you're Democrat, Republican, dog doesn't give a shit. Dog does not give a shit. And that's really hard for people to understand because the rest of the world, the rest of the human world does. It's, it's a very pure form of communication that people have a hard time understanding because there's so much static in human behavior. There's so much static in how, you know, there, there's, there's, uh, we lie, we cheat, we change perspectives. We, uh, we're protected from nature. We're all these things that are happening uh, and we misinterpret what the dog is saying. And then, so when people, people say to me all the time, can you, can you help me? I don't know. I don't know if I can help you. I honestly don't. People are only going to go as far as they want. Um, and it's easier for people to just get an electric collar or a clicker or change their life for the dog. You know, um, I <clears throat> had someone send me a video, uh, which I often ask for, for people who are, um, you know, having problems with their dog. And, and I, I see that the dog is resource aggressive and, and the parents are like, everybody just leave. What's up, Doug? Just leave everything. Leave the dog alone when it's eating. We'll give the dog its own room when it's eating. Um, yeah. Okay. Probably a smart play, but long-term that's just a shitty play. Um, when dogs, so I'm doing a, I'm doing a, a video today and it'll probably be the last thing I do before I go to Minnesota. And this will be the last live until I get back from Minnesota. But yeah. Yeah. Well, she's under a spell, Tony, but uh, I'm doing a video on resource aggression and 
you know, I, I hear so many opinions and so many people talk about um, what, what they believe causes it. And then there's trainers on the other side that are just like, just zap it. Like, just zap it. That's it. You, this isn't the answer to everything. It's not. Click or zap. It's not the answer. And we as humans have gotten to that point where we just think, okay, well, if it's bad, put an e-collar on it. And if it's good, give it a cookie. And that's just not the way it works. What's up, Paul? Um, short term, there's people that can make you believe that, but that's not, that's not reality. And if you want a two-sided relationship with your dog, a deep bond with your dog, because you have a bond already. If you have a bond with your dog, it's because typically it's one-sided. Uh, she was a special kind of owner, no teaching moments for her at that time. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, sad. Uh, what's up, John? Shalana, what, what Tony said is my BF. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, so when I start working and there's a lot of people, it's getting smaller and smaller, but there's people that go. Why isn't my dog getting any better? And I said, did you do what I told you to do? So look at that. Look at that video. So again, just give me a thumbs up if you saw the video. So I know who saw and who didn't. If, if you look at that video on Patreon, I'm, I'm giving her the answer. I'm giving her the answer. Handing it to her. Here you go. Here's what you have to do. She doesn't want it. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. So can you imagine going to, <laughs> going to, a, 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 I mean, it happens all the time with people. They go to the doctor and they say, you know, uh, who was I talking to? Oh, one of my customers, uh, unbelievable. Uh, mom had two heart attacks in a week. She's on oxygen, on oxygen. She had two heart attacks. Lucky to be alive. She's on oxygen. You know, the tube goes around. And she's still smoking and drinking. Won't stop. Won't stop. I mean, you, you don't get a wake-up call that close to the edge and live and ignore that. It's funny, I, I, I have a relative who has, uh, yeah, doesn't care, but she wants people to care about her, Nikki. She wants people to take care of her. Well, how do you take care of someone that's not, that's like, look, you almost died twice, and here's, you have oxygen on and you're smoking. Like, you're going to blow your head off. You're going to blow your head off. And then those people, so that, that woman who had the two heart attacks is like, why doesn't anybody care about me? Because you don't care about yourself. How can you, it's not my job for you to smarten up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I uh, been taking my diet very seriously because I'm a diabetic and I, um, I wanted to make a meme because my doctor says, like, you have to lose weight, right? So it's a picture of a doctor saying, you know, like, talking to you like this. And then there's a picture of, like, a fat dude. And then there's a picture of a fat dude with no legs. It says, <laughs> either way, diabetes is going to make you lose weight. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the food, it's you. Yeah, that's right. It's not anything, it's you. And we we just don't want that. We don't we we fight reality so hard. And that video of that lady who, if you know the story, and at the end I kind of drop it on you, um, you she she just wants that hole in her heart filled, and the dog doesn't get it. And she believes in her heart. Like, this is what's fucked up. Have you ever had something in front of you where you're like, what are you saying? Like, 
are you you're saying that I'm bald? Like, what are you talking about? I'm not bald. And everyone in the room is like, dude, you're fucking bald. And you're like, no, I'm beautiful. I look, look at that. Just had it, I just had it permed and colored. And you're like, there's so many people like that with dogs, and there's so many dog trainers like that. Oh, it's just tough. It's just tough. And so when you start to really want to get people, oh, okay. Yeah, speaking of which, yeah, I mean, it, it's a hard look, but. But do you want it? You know, you. that's why I, I talk a lot about the gift of desperation. Like when the pain gets great enough, you'll change. That's an old alcoholic's creed. No, I'm not an alcoholic. But um, that, that's the pain gets great enough, you'll change. Now you can change. You can um, die. You can get rid of what you think is causing pain. So if a dog turns into an aggressive dog and you want to get rid of the pain, you get rid of the dog. But you didn't get rid of the problem. You got rid of the symptom. You know, it's funny. Dog trainers suffer from it, too. I know so many dog trainers that started off with passion and promise, and they're useless and self-absorbed now because they thought that what they do wasn't as important as their greed or who they wanted to be perceived as. Does that make sense? So their image and, and their greed to get money and likes and commercial, that they forgot, they forgot that there's a dog down there and there's a human there. And they'll tell you the same thing. They don't, they don't get it. They're, they're like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That's, that's that whole thing. There's, so, there's a generation of trainers that don't understand what dog training is. And when you're trying to deal with people to get them to understand, look, you've got to start over. You've got to start over. You have to start over. And they they go, well, I'll, I'll kind of start over. Kind of starting over is not starting over. It's not. So when you, when you realize, yeah, that's right, and they take your money, the... It, when you realize, like truly realize what, what a dog is, oh my God, it's incredibly fun. It's incredibly fun. It's incredibly educational. It's stimulating. But a dog is always going to show you what the mirror says. Mirror, mirror on the wall. That's what the dog says. Sometimes it's like third generation mirror, right? So someone gets a dog, they don't understand it, and they uh, they fuck it up because of their bags, and they get rid of it. Then somebody else gets it and says, I'm going to save it, and then they get rid of it. And now you're the third person, and now the dog's had two prior reps to being an asshole or being afraid. And the dog is like, look, I keep going to these foster homes, and I don't know what's happening. There's too many people in the rescue world, in the veterinary world, in the breeding world that just don't understand what a dog is. They just don't understand. And when you you start from here thinking that a dog is a dog, you guys go together. When you start from this is my baby or I need to fill a hole, it goes apart. And people cannot, they don't want that reality. So there's so much that Yeah, you. there's so much that people want the answer to. And so there's a whole industry on treating symptoms. Now we're treating it with electronics. Um, thank you, Heather. Um, and, and we're treating with medication. And we're treating with violence. And we're treating with uh, mental telepathy. And we're treating with toys. And we're treating with blindfolds and thunder shirts. And... and um, um, or essential oils and you know CBD. Why does anybody a lick mat, whatever it is, 
does anybody ever understand that the answer you you can keep marketing an answer that isn't an answer and it makes you feel better like i i got a thunder shirt i did i got it but it doesn't fix the fucking problem and the problem is like even that dog in that video when you look at that video that is that is something that really uh, jumps out at me and and i told you i could take that video and and a, a, a thousand times break it down but one of the things you look at that video you look at it uh did devin just yeah 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 um yeah look at that i got a, i got a hoodie on um you look at that dog and this is this is a dog that's been asked too much of too soon so you take this puppy and I, I again guys i can't make you understand this and there's people that go like yeah that's great that's great what are we doing today uh, just a second. Honey, do we have toilet paper? Do we have toilet paper? I got, okay, it's good. What did you say? Oh, I agree with it. You're not paying attention. When you take a puppy and you take it away from its siblings and its mom, your puppy's fine. They, they put rules on it. The, the, the puppies are trying to figure out a hierarchy, so they're going to correct, submit. They're going to possess. They're going to tell you who they are. They're developing who they are. The mother... If they try to nurse, that's the first correction. It's not purely positive, but it's not extraordinarily negative, but it's negative. That's how dogs learn their boundaries. How you learn to put on that negative is dog training and behavior. Because if you put on the negative by going, no, that's nothing. But if you go, <clears throat> you club the puppy like a fur seal, you're a dick and that's too much. So that's where the art is is learning level of correction, learning area of influence, learning to not be anthropomorphic, right? So we take this puppy away. And if you had left it with all those other dogs, it would be fine in a dog world. It would be fine. It would learn consequentially. It would learn not to go eat a bee's nest. It would learn not to go do X, Y, and Z, right? But we take it out and then we put it in our fucked up reality. watch all that dog is not aware that you're mentally ill that you're seeing that dog as a stuffed animal that dog's not aware of that that dog's an opportunistic predator in the making so that dog goes they just give you everything here i got like 500 toys i have my own personal masseuse i have uh, you know, these people that, that, that if I look like this, they give me a cookie. Um, you know, I can mark shit. I can take shit. I can do this. I can do that. And it's no, no, no. And that puppy just gets like false confidence. That puppy's like, yeah, man, I'm the shit. Go watch the, the, the cartoon Bolt. John Travolta is the dog. That's it. The dog thinks on a movie studio, he thinks he has superpowers. Your dog thinks it has superpowers or your puppy does. And you build it up like that. I love when people say my dog is my child. They, they don't know what that means because many times they don't have kids. Um, you know, kids, I'm not here to be liked. I'm here, I'm here to teach you life skills, right? So now we've broken that very sacred natural cycle of consequential learning. And we just put this dog out there in the world and say, guess what? We're here to serve you. We pet it. We pick it up when it cries. We pamper the shit out of it. None of this stuff would happen to that puppy if it, if it was left with dogs. None of it. None of it. Then, because we can't take the dog's reality, we substitute training for purely positive, which isn't training by the classical definition, what it is, is it's, it's, it's fooling yourself into saying, see, that? Good. see, we're training, see, it's perpetual preschool. But if you take a kid and you keep them in perpetual preschool, they're not going to be able to live out in the world. They don't know what the hard lessons are. They don't know not to chase a car. They don't know not to eat this shit. They don't know that. That's why that whole fucking snafari thing 
you're just enhancing the dog's natural ability to tune you out. Uh, my old time bulldog puppy hated faces because the breeder constantly kissed his face until he growled because uh, she thought it was cute. Well, that's personal pressure. It's not face. You could do it with your hand too, and the dog would growl. So, but yeah, I see what you're saying. So, so now we take that dog and we we're not even looking for dog training. I don't know people. I mean, I'm sure they're out there, but I don't know people that go, I've got this dog. I'm going to train it. You know, I'm going to take it to class to socialize. No, I'm going to take it to the dog park to socialize. No, because then you're putting it back in with the dogs and the, that language comes out. So the dog learns to be a bully, a victim or an avoider. The dog learns that weakness draws aggression and strength repels aggression. The dog learns to disobey. Same thing with daycare. Same thing. Play dates. Same thing. But we want that dog to be happy. Now that dog is happy. That chihuahua is happy when that beautiful lady with all the money is catering to her. She's happy and the dog's happy. But you bring someone else into that world and the dog is like, I don't want to be in charge. I don't want She's like, it's okay. Oh, this is what you want me to do? So by the way, let's praise that fear dumbasses and then the dog develops these habits where it starts to bite he's a year and a half old and now he's developed these problems she says at the beginning of that video i don't have a lot of control and i say no shit that dog's a fashion accessory that turned into an emotional abyss did you notice did you notice that when i said uh she said oh the dog barks when anybody comes to me comes towards me. And I said, well, who wouldn't? She was like, <laughs> and then she put her hand up like this. She doesn't want people looking at her, but she does. She doesn't want people touching her. She doesn't want all that. She's, she's, she's very, she's learned how to play the game socially as a human being, but she, she just wants her and that dog. That's all she wants. That's all she wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so amazing to watch that this lady is being given the answer. And this is people who hire me all the time. They go, what do I do? And I go, hey, we have to start over. What? You know, there's a trainer down the street that gives me an e-collar and a muzzle and a prong collar, and I get better results. Then why are you here? Why are you here then? And I mean that. I mean that in the most respectful way. Why are you here? Well, because that doesn't work. Okay. So that doesn't work. You tried to fast track it. You trusted the process. The trainer jumped around from this method to this trainer, to this style, to this equipment, to this thing. And you're still in there. What, why are you fighting me on this? Why are you fighting me? It's what happened with the people in England. Trying to help. Trying to help. Nope. We don't like dog training this way. We like dog training this way. And we want to tell everybody this is how you do it. But nobody's getting better. Everybody's just playing fucky fuck. So you take that puppy and the message you're sending, you're sending to that dog is that he is in charge of you and everyone that comes in your house. But it's based in fear. And it's turning into aggression. That, it, that is as plain as the nose on my face to me. I understand that it's difficult for people to see it, but when someone has this filter over them, like they're like, I just love this dog so much. Why? Because of his stellar obedience? Because he pisses and shits in your house and on your bed? Because he bites people? No. Then tell me why you love him. Tell me why. Why do you love him? Well, because, because he's yours. 
and because you got them to fill that void. Now, there's people who, you know, they'll go to a seminar, they'll try with me, they'll say, oh, Chris is so mean. Do you think I was mean to that woman? Do you think I was mean to that woman? Yes or no? Simple as, simple as that. If you watch the video, tell me if you thought I was mean to that woman. No. I was as honest as I could be without shattering her. No way. No, I don't, I'm not mean. Nope. I look like this, so people go, oh. And I can't, I can't help that, but that's, that's the way it is. So that's what brick one is, is brick one is, look, we can't move any further until you fucking accept that that's a dog. We cannot move. It does not think like you think, John. It doesn't think like you think. It doesn't act like you think. It it, it doesn't have the same values that you have. You, I, I say at the beginning of every seminar, who want, put your hands up, show your hands. Who wants my best, my absolute best effort? Everybody puts their hand up. Who wants the truth? Everybody puts their hand up. So I go... I go on that, but then, but then <laughs> is my chair. Okay. No, it's hurting. So then I go, okay, here's some, here's some truth. And, and here's the deal. They start to go, well, you're being a dick and you're just doing, no, I am quite sure that it feels like I'm being an asshole to you. I am quite sure it does. But remember, there's people online who are very honest with me in a very mean way. Would you agree or not agree? That is a big moth. Pink walrus, boil on the, you know, cancer. What is it? The cancer? I don't know. Uh, thanks, Nikki. Appreciate that. Um, you know, all those things, but I don't, I don't go, yeah, well, fuck you. I go, all right, if that's your reality, that's your reality, right? That's your reality. But if people looked at me and said, Hey man, you're fat. I'd go, yeah. What's your point? Let's move on. I get it. I know who I am. I know what I am. Let's go. It's so hard to get people to drop their shields that they get through life with. They get through life with it and they think that's reality. This is what they think. How the fuck can you change that dog when you, when you want that dog to subscribe to your reality and it's a dog? No other animal will subscribe to the human point of view, not even primates. We're a mutation that doesn't accept reality, that doesn't accept nature as it is. We destroy nature. And we take dogs and we put our absolute worst on them. It never used to be like that. We used to take our best and put it on them. We used to take dogs and enhance them and they enhanced us. It was a great relationship. Now humans take their anger, their pity, their need for sympathy, their social status, and they dump them. They don't even know they're doing it. And we promote it and we say to everybody, this is the way to go because it makes us feel good. No. Yeah, alternate realities. That's what it is. So when you take this puppy, this chihuahua puppy, and he's got free run of the house, what does he think? What impression does that give him? It's his house. When you take this puppy and he whines for food and you give it to him, what impression does that make on the puppy? What is the dog's eye point of view? When he shits in your house and you clean it 
So he say he lifts his leg on the corner of the couch and you go over there and you squirt it down with some Otoban or whatever. And then you wipe it off. And he's like, bitch, I just marked that. And then he comes over and he squirts it again. And you go, no, no, no. And you, you spray your shit. And he goes, ah, you guys are in a pissing contest, a natural pissing contest that you can't understand. Why is he doing that? Because he thinks it's his house. You're telling him it's his house. Then you get frustrated and go, no. And the dog's like, okay, I don't know what the fuck that was for, but you come at me again. I'm going to bite your ass. Mm. So this dog thinks it owns everything, including that lady. That's too much responsibility for a young dog. It's, it's too much responsibility for any dog. But she's so happy because the dog sees her as a fucking doormat. A doormat. Hey, monkey, rub my ass. Okay. Hey, monkey, dinner. You're a little late with dinner. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Hey, monkey, throw the ball. Okay. Hey, monkey, someone's at the door. Okay, I'm scared. Pet me. Okay. Where is she telling the dog where its limits are? She's not. So that's the problem. You're trying to communicate with the dog like it's your infant human special needs grandchild at like a Montessori school. No. It's a dog. If you put that dog out with a bunch of other dogs, that communication becomes crystal clear. And a lot of dogs who have, have had that cycle broken too early start to go, what are these dogs doing? They don't get it. They think that life is all about them being in charge. And it's not. It's not. So when people come to one of my seminars or they come to classes or they come to an evaluation or they talk to me online, they are under a very, very, very incorrect impression. And they paid people for it. We have to get back to telling people first, what is a dog? Not, I can fix this problem. I can fix that. Everybody gets an e-caller. Everybody gets a problem. I mean, if, if that video doesn't show you my frustration with everybody gets an e-caller, everybody gets a prong caller, everybody gets a muzzle. Can you imagine what would happen to that little puppy if he went to an e-caller trainer? You're going to break him. Because nobody wants to put in the work, but everybody wants the money. We're forgetting what we're supposed to be doing. And we're all trying to be the best. Everybody's the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Are you the best? Saying you're the best doesn't make you the best. Showing that you're the best. I think the best trainers understand what a dog is and they understand what a person is. And when you can when you can understand what a person is and you can be real with them, they don't teach you this at academies or schools. They don't, they don't teach it to you. They, they just want you to learn down, sit or click feed or zap, zap. Just want your money. They're going to get you in. They're going to get you out. It's like going to the doctor or the vet or a fast food place. Like, get them in, get them out. Get them in, get them out. Get them in, get them out. The, the money's in the volume. You, you really want to do the work? I'll help you. And I'm not, I'm not charging as much as these other people are. But I'm asking way more of you than they are. And isn't that what we should be doing? Is educating the handler? And asking more of them. Oh, everybody's used to controlling the situation, Annie.
she's also Annie. She's also, I mean, this is why I say I could, I could absolutely break that video down a thousand times. Everyone's watching her, but, but she's okay for everyone watching her. If she's cute, she's not used to everyone watching her when she's wrong. Uh, the camera's on. She's okay with the camera on because I know what she does for a living, but that she's not okay with the camera recording her emotional weakness. Uh, let's see. Best help there, in my opinion. Yeah, been to plenty, and I still have a husky that gives me the finger every time. Yeah. It's, it, it's very different for people. So, you know, how many people, give me a thumbs up, how many people have been to other seminars for famous trainers or well-known trainers? Because I'm not a famous trainer and I'm not a well-known trainer. Yep. And when you go to these seminars, I think, and I've not been to them because they won't let me go, that they're all teaching pretty much the same thing. Most of them are teaching marketing or they're teaching how to treat the symptoms or they're teaching all these things. I don't want that. I don't ever want that. When you look at that video, yeah, when you look at that video, that video is so special to me. And really, it's like a three-minute video. It's not long. I mean, we, we broke it down again and again and again and again and again. But, but that's the kind of content I want to put on Patreon. That's where I want that to go. I have to put out YouTube videos um, just to keep people, because if I nobody really talks about Patreon and says, oh, you got to go see this guy. It's kind of a very personal thing, and I'm cool with that. But I'm going to put out the YouTube videos, but they're going to be kind of shorter little snippets. Um, and, and I really don't want to be on Facebook anymore. I really don't. Like, I'm only using it to say I'm on somewhere else, right? Um, that's not the business model. The business model is Facebook, 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 Instagram, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever all those things are. That's not what I want. I don't want everybody here. There's a velvet rope, and it's going to get to where you're going to have to do a lot to get that rope open. Yeah. And that doesn't even matter, Kim, is that even in bite sports, it's all about, you know, Malinois, Dutch Shepherd, toy under your armpit, e-collar, walking like unnaturally. Yeah, bring your A-game. Bring your A-game. That's what I want. And I, I, I th there's something else, too, for people that haven't been to a seminar. I, I get tired of fighting people. And I don't mean fighting like, you're going to fucking do it. I don't mean that. I mean that at some point, it's not going to make sense to you. And I'm going to, because it's from a dog's eye point of view. And I say, you got to do this. No, I'm not doing that. Okay, we're done. We're done. Because that's where dog training went wrong. That's where it went wrong. It started to cater to the people to get their money rather than give them the truth. And now that's become accepted because people think that's dog training now. When we let purely positive people in the room because we were like, God, they're so stupid, it'll never work. Guess what? There's your cancer. And now we have a, a generation of hipsters with fucking e-collars and, and, and they think they're getting a result. What they're doing is they're taking a very specific dog, a high drive dog, and they piss through dogs. They piss through them. They just never tell you that. Uh, people think mean is not letting your dog get away with stuff yet. That's right. It's very difficult nowadays to try to get people. I mean, and that's the whole thing on Patreon is that when you go on Patreon, it's not technique. The technique is like if you watch the uh, out of context video, we weren't trying to make that dog not touch food. We were trying to teach that dog what the correct choice is and what the wrong choice is and then show us that you get it. That was teaching. Now we know the dog knows the answer. We can train. There's too many people that the dog is like, don't hit me with that shit again. Do not fucking zap me again. 
or food, 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 food. Oh, there's food over there. I'll go get it. Snafari, this, that. You people get so butthurt when they absolutely believe they have the answer and they don't have the answer. They don't. They have an answer and they have methods and they, they'll blow you off and say, look, this isn't going to work for your dog. So, you know, whatever, but they already took your money and now they're like, Oh, I can't help you. Ask yourself a question. And, and the, only the people that know me are going to be able to answer this. If I had your dog, do you think your dog would be better? If your trainer had your dog, do you think your dog would be better? Now, I don't mean better like it will do obedience or this or that. What I mean is that the dog would be much more understood. Okay, it's really hard for me to say that. Like that is really incredibly difficult because it sounds so braggadocious. It's unbelievable. And again, I'll tell you, with, with social media, I thought – I really did. I was ignorant. I said, oh, yeah, people know how to train dogs. That's the way it is. And then I got on social media. I'm like, what the fuck are people doing? What the fuck are people doing? And people are so willing. There's people that do dog training because they just want to say they're doing it. There's people that do dog training because they want performance, like most of the bite work people and some of the other uh, more aggressive sports. But what they've forgotten is that you still it's still obedience. Bite work is still obedience. French ring is still obedience. Schutzen is still obedience, even the bite work. And what they forgot is how to build a dog and how to get the dog to understand. What they're looking for now is a dog that has so much drive and such a high pain tolerance that it can stay focused through that drive to have a routine jammed down its throat clubbed into its head, fried into its body. And then they think, yeah, that's blacksmith work. Teach the dog. Teach the dog. Yeah, never learned it. They don't even know. How many times do you think you're successful when you look at a performance generation and you tell them to slow down, you can get better performance? Why are we leaving? I don't know. Where are we going? I don't know what that means. It's, if you look at that video, that is an indictment of dog ownership today. And then the dogs get aggressive. Okay, you got a, a five-pound chihuahua gets aggressive. That's a manageable problem. Oh, what are we leaving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ring is artwork. It used to be, it used to be tougher, John. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But, but if you don't fit, hmm, if you don't fit into the, uh, what do they call that now? The demographic. They don't want you. I would love to go, I would love to take a dog of mine to dog trainers, start locally. Linda and I talked about this and say, here, tell us what to do. And then I would just ask questions like, do you think that that's going to lead to this? Or do you think so? You watch, they'll fall apart. Dog trainers will fall the fuck apart because they only think so far. They don't think deeply. They don't think. They, they haven't had to go through the experiences. They just want the result. I don't want, I want the baby I don't want the labor pains. Well, you don't get the fucking baby if you don't have the labor pains. The labor pains where the experience is. Yeesh. So you look at that. Look at the difference between that lady and Janelle. There you go. There you go. There you go. And how many people have been to dog trainers and been just lied to, defrauded? That's what I mean is all these people out there saying sexier than a squirrel, bark box, uh, disease, you know, fingers up the ass, the penetrator. You guys, you got all they're doing, all these people like, they want to be part of a celebrity. 
They don't want the answer. I'm not here for so I'm not here because I look good. Think about that. I'm here because I want you to get better. I'm here because I know something you don't know. And I want to give it to you. I want to be paid for my time. But I've never been accused of being the person who gives too little. Shut up, Shalana. Knucklehead. The other thing, too, is everybody's got a backstory. Everybody's got a boo-hoo or a poor me or a great success or a great triumph. Doesn't matter. When I watch former athletes get into dog training, they think they they think they can coach the dog like their coach coached them. You get out there and you do it. You can't fucking do that. What are you doing? You watch people that have had traumatic experiences, and they're like, I'm never going to be mean to anyone again. So say okay. That, that's you projecting onto the dog. It's not, it's not going to work. Look at the difference. Look at the people who want it. We, have to, we sit down and talk a lot. Like, I'm not just like, do this, do that, do this. Like, I need some backstory here. And I'm going to tell you who you are. And I'm usually right. And that's because I'm seeing, I've learned to see what the dog sees. And that, when you, when you understand that, and you have PTSD, or you have aggression issues, or you have depression, or you have anxiety, that dog will pull you out of that hole if you trust the dog. You will pull the dog into the hole if you're not trying to use the experience, process the trauma, or realize that your glory days are behind you, and this is different. That dog will pull you out of that hole. Or can pull you out of that hole. But you gotta you gotta see the dog is the key to reality. The key. The dog is the dog is the dog's not gonna lie to you. Look at the the chick with the face and the thing and the broken arm. She's a, like, you could tell me all the dog trainers get bit. You don't get mauled in two weeks. Mauled. To the point where you could have died in both of them in, in two weeks, in two weeks' time with that resume. The dog's talking to you, but your ego is so big that you can't hear it. I've had people want to go to the competitions. I'm like, you're not ready for competition. You're holding me back. Go ahead. Go to the competition. What'd you learn? People, people get mad. Like you go, they'll go, why didn't you tell me to stop? I did. What do I have to do? That's like a Willy Wonka and Veruca salt, right? Where he's like, don't eat that. It's bad for you. Shouldn't do that. And she's ah, 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 ah. She grows up. Why didn't you tell her? Well, I got to yell. I got to yell. Your lesson comes from your mistakes. Your successes come from understanding that you made a mistake and your ability to grow and move forward. Peace, Dougie. You got to earn it. You got to earn it. I'm not here to make your dog better. I'm not here to make you better. I'm here to show you how I would do it. And then you've got to practice it. You got to believe it. And sometimes you have to take a leap of faith. And that's hard because dog trainers nowadays are just out for that money. They just want to take it. They just want to take it and run, take it and run, take it and run, take it and run. I mean, um, the bonker there has a, a whole seminar on how to market. Yeah, I'm not good at marketing. I'm good at dog training, good at dog behavior, good at people behavior. There's 20 people watching this. If he does a live, there might be a thousand. Those aren't my people. If you if you want to understand 
<laughs> Shut up, dude. I got an ugly visual now. Um, if you want to understand, it's here. It's here. You can do it. I'll sit with you. I'll cry with you. I'll laugh with you. But when you look at that lady, she at no point, at the end of that evaluation, she's still trying to find the dog's eye. I love you. Don't talk to him. What do you want me to do? You, you sit there taking that lady's money. You're a criminal. You, you keep stringing that lady along. Look, I, it, 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 ask Janelle. Ask April Gilbert Cowens. Ask anybody who has – ask Shalonda. She's new, but – so, well, you know, I, I want to do this. I said, do what you got to do at home. It's not my job to fucking make you do it. Well, Chris, it didn't work out. What would you learn? What would I tell you? It's less than a clock. You're not, you are absolutely, you are absolutely free to make choices about you and your dog, 100%. But you are not immune from the consequences of those choices. Yeah, that's another part. That's a big dog trainer thing. Look, there's a psychology to being a dog trainer. And it's not dog behavior, it's human behavior. You can't make a correction now with someone calling the police without someone calling the police. You, do you understand how we just keep losing, keep losing, keep losing? And the people that are out there are like, hey, welcome to the greatest. They're losing it for us. We keep losing touch with the dog's reality. And eventually, if you follow that timeline, we won't be able to have them. We rode their backs to the Industrial Revolution, and then we didn't need them anymore. And now there's an old, I love this saying, it's like an old Aztec or mine saying, it says, when the gods which wish to punish us, they give us everything we want. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, questions, comments, concerns, criticisms. If you're not on Patreon, go subscribe. It's cheap. Uh, it's where I'm going to be putting the A-list content. Um, and, I, I, you know, I'll give you some stuff on, on YouTube like this. Um, but I, I got a lot of filming to do out in Minnesota. There will be a lot of lessons. And we will, uh, we will learn them together if you want it. You can do it. The choice is yours. What's up, Renee? So anybody got questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, anything? This is your time. Painting today? Yeah, I want to paint today. I really do. I want to get it done. Ugh. Uh, what else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? No, Candace, thank you. If you want it badly enough, you'll find a reason. If not, you'll find an excuse. Yep, that's true. Thanks, honey. Oh, it's my big Latino friend. He's the man. Uh, yeah, I got I got some stuff to do. I'll bring my son. And I, I'll be in and out. But, yeah, I, could, I would appreciate the help. Where are you going? Target. Target with who? With friends. With your friend? You don't have friends. You're not allowed to have friends. It's my daughter. Nope. Daughter's not allowed to have friends. That's it. All right. I'll talk to you right after this, Nikki. Boom. All right. What am I supposed to do now? Where's uh, Where's Heather? Like, what am I supposed to do, Heather? Heather, tell him. <laughs> She's a good kid. Like the video? Anything else? Like, I know more than that. Thanks, Heather, for absolute minimums. I appreciate that.
like, subscribe, comment, and share, right? Yep. If you think this video is worth anything, share it. If you think it's, I'll tell you what, we, we say this all the time. Go put it on a training group and, and watch how much you're shunned and pushed away. Hit that notification bell. Yeah, just tell Heather, just tell me what to say. Heather's got a great idea, and I'm not saying shit, but you watch. Watch Heather. You watch. Um, did you see the food? Yes, I see the food. I watch the food. I'm getting fatter by looking at it. You're not helping me, John. Jeez. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know. I, I, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. Uh Oh, my God, you freaks. And it's going to be amazing. Yep. I don't care. I don't care. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I truly will see some of you in Minnesota. I will see the rest of you when I get back from Minnesota. I'll have a whole new group of videos, um, and uh, we'll, we'll have to be, like, our asses off, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but something else, boy. Something else. A bunch of warriors out there. I love it. If, uh, we still have spots for the Texas seminar and the New Hampshire seminar. If you want to have a seminar, if you want to have me come out there with the team, then you need to contact April or Nikki, and they will put you through uh, the requirements that you need to make. And uh, I hope I hope you guys, uh, I hope to meet you, hope to help you, hope to work with your dogs, and I appreciate you because I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So uh, it means a lot. Date for New Hampshire are on. Nikki, where are they? Talk to Nikki. Talk to Nikki. Please talk to Nikki. I, I, so here's another thing. Last thing. I'm absolutely useless other than dog training, making babies. They took that away from me and eating food. So on the seminar page. Okay. Peace.